What's everybody? I'm back with an updated video. Uh, just wanted to dive a little bit deeper. I've been using this camera for now a couple weeks, so I feel pretty confident in doing uh, kind of a mini review on it. Uh, the Chu Zhao Digicam 1930s style. Um, and what I really underestimated about this camera, it has a 12 megapixel uh, sensor, but don't write home about it. It's not going to be like crazy amazing, but it is better than uh, some of the other Digicams out there. It's, it's pretty good quality, but the video is what I'm most excited about. Um, and if you don't know how this camera works, there's a couple of finicky things about the buttons and inside the paperwork, it doesn't actually show you all the things. So for example, it has this little scroll wheel that you can go like this to shoot video. Uh, there's no stabilization though. So it's going to be very shaky in that format. And there's no sound. There's no audio recorded when you go like this. And then also it doesn't actually show you on the paperwork, but this little, there's a button on the side here. You can actually press this and that'll actually refocus the lens. I don't think that even says it in the paperwork. Uh, secondly, um, if you hold the shutter button, this is the shutter button here. If you hold it down for like three seconds, it'll start recording a video with audio. And then you can hold the camera and your hands can be like a steady cam and it, and it works a lot better. Um, but what I want to highlight again, uh, this is a part two to the previous video, is this little a ring that I adapted onto the front of the lens. Uh, this is a fake, this does nothing, this is a fake lens here. Uh, just It's matching the style of those old, old 1930s style lenses. Um, but the ring's on there and my favorite adapted lens to put on here, it's a, four, it's a 17 millimeter thread, is the ND filter. Um, and this has absolutely changed the game for me doing video with this because the, the natively the sensor, it's very sensitive to light. And so everything will be blown out. Everything will be washed out in any harsh lighting conditions. Put the ND filter on there, hold it down, shoot a video. And then you actually got some pretty decent video capture ability with this, which is pretty fun. Um, the photos capture in a square format, but when you do video, it does stretch it out. Uh, and it captures like a, a, a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I believe. Uh, so the video is slightly different. Um, but the ND filter is my favorite adaptive lens on there. Um, but I want to show you a new lens that I got. Uh, and again, any lens will work as long as it has a 17 millimeter thread. Now this is a behemoth. This is by Newer. It's a 60 millimeter lens. It's very heavy. Uh, heavy to the point where I'm almost a little bit worried that my the glue that I used on the front of the lens here won't work. But again, it's got a 17 millimeter thread, so you adapt it and check that out. Look at that. Does that not look so cool? And now this will change it from about a 20 millimeter equivalent to a 60 millimeter um, relatively. And yes, it's very front heavy, but what I like now is it almost has like the ability for me to hold it like this as a grip. And then when I'm shooting video, it's actually very stable and a little bit of a weightedness to it actually helps with the st st stabilization. Um, but isn't that just so beautiful looking? I had a lot of comments the other day. I went to the beach and a bunch of people were asking me, what kind of lens, what kind of camera is that? What is that? And look at that. You just adapt lenses on there. And because they're making a ton of these lenses now, different companies are coming out with their own. There's a bunch of different lenses you, you can get. Um, there's macro lenses, there's wide angle lenses, there's, um, a lot of really, really cool stuff. So this has been really, really fun to shoot. Uh, does a portrait style now with the actual photography side of things. But what I really dove into heavily the last couple of days is actually the video of this, of using this as like a home video camera that does like, uh, makes it look a little bit more old school. And that's been um, a lot of fun to kind of mess with and make home videos and stuff like that because it makes it look like a vintage style video especially when you hit this button here on this other side opposite the shutter button is this will change it to black and white so then you can do shoot black and white photos or black and white video and i did a little home video with my kids the other day and um did some really cool little black and white video um, and then also there was a comment on my last video uh to actually put up the uh some images showing the different lenses so i got the newer lens and then i got a handful of kind of some other lenses from one of the packs that i got and uh and i'm gonna put those up now uh and i'll do some commentary over it but basically i took a i got a subject and i wanted to keep the subject exactly the same the lighting exactly the same but then just show you what some of the other lenses look like with that square format and also some of the lenses there is a little bit of vignette uh like when i put the two times teleconverter on there 
you'll see that there's a little bit of vignette around the edges. So you just got to crop in just a little bit to kind of remove that. But some people like the vignette too look. So I know in some of my videos, I actually just kept the vignette because it looks kind of cool. Um, so anyway, but this has been my most exciting lens so far as I really, really like this. Now it is very, very heavy. This, this lens itself weighs more than the entire camera. So keep that in mind. Um, and then uh, this is by far the heaviest lenses. All of them typically weigh this. This weighs virtually nothing. So whatever glue that you use to put the adaptive ring on there, the 17 millimeter ring, um, just make sure that you know it's, it's strong enough to withstand any of these lenses. This is by far probably the heaviest lens that I'll ever go with. Um, and then, but uh, this is definitely a cool one. It's again, it's newer, the 60 millimeter, 17 millimeter thread on this side and a 43 millimeter thread for any sort of uh, filters that you want to put on this, which I might end up venturing into as well, because to be able to add some filters onto this lens would be actually kind of cool as well. Um, so that's that. I just wanted to do a little bit of update for you on that. And then stay tuned right now. I'm going to put those um, comparison um, photos up so you can see what it actually looks like with the adaptive lenses. The first photo is going to be this without any lenses and then the lenses that follow. All right. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. All right. So for these sample photos, I just took a little toy car from my son and I wanted to make the lighting nice and consistent throughout all these images. So this is the first one is just the straight camera. Nothing adapted. This is just how it looks straight out of camera. No editing. The next lens that's coming up is going to be a blue filter. And you got kind of like a star filter and then a kaleidoscope filter. And then this is the macro lens coming up. I love the macro lens. This is a fisheye lens, um, another fisheye lens. And then this one's just an ultra wide lens. And then you got yourself another kind of radial filter, another wide angle lens. Uh, this one kind of blurs the outside. Another kind of blurred one, kaleidoscope. Um, and then this one right here, this one's really exciting. This is the ones with the 60 millimeter lens that I just showed you. Um, so those are some of the cool looks you can get. Again, keep in mind, I didn't change the, the distance of the camera uh, uh, at, at all. I kept everything consistently. I just changed, changed the lens. So as you can see, definitely opens some creative options. Um, and there's way more lenses than what I've even showed there. Different filter lenses. Another one is the... Uh, circular polarizer lens, the ND filter, um, a lot of really cool stuff. So just gives you that ability to be as creative as you want. And that's what's so neat about this type of camera. And there you have it. There's a couple of the lenses. Uh, so you can actually see what it's producing. Uh, they are 12 megapixel images, uh, but it's a small sensor. So the image quality is going to be less than a phone. So why get this kind of camera? Why even mess with it? Why waste your time? Well, most people, it would be a waste of time. But what's kind of nice, sometimes it's fun to break out of the mold of your traditional camera um, or using your phone. I, I really, really liked doing the video with this over my phone simply because sometimes there's a lot of distraction on the phone. You're constantly getting notifications. Your work's trying to contact you. So it's nice to like go to the beach or be with family and put, take your put your phone down and then just focus on doing family capture with something like this. I think that's the use case. Uh, and there's definitely some really creative things you can do with a camera like this. And then if you just want the nostalgia of having a top down view, uh, 1930 style camera, but also have the freedom of having a 16 gigabyte, you know, 12 megapixel digital camera version of it and at only a hundred bucks i think it's worth it just to have the fun of maybe rediscovering the simplicity of photography and video capture not everything has to be 8k and absolutely perfectly color graded in order to have something that can make you smile so if you take this on a family vacation camping or you're going to a national park or you're going to Disneyland or whatever, like you can just take this and really simply capture some fun moments. Um, and it doesn't disappoint. So I highly recommend it. Um, but again, it's not going to be for everyone. And if you're expecting out of this world image or video quality, you're going to be disappointed. So just keep that in mind. But to be able to adapt these lenses, it does make it more fun. It makes it more creative options and things like that. 
especially with the macro, uh, to be able to shoot macro with this. Uh, in video, that's one thing I want to highlight real quick. In video, um, it doesn't have very good close close focusing distance. So in video, um, it's, it, it, that's one issue that I saw is you kind of have to be much further back. In photo, the close, close focusing is actually fairly decent. But in video, for whatever reason, when it switches over to the video format, it just doesn't focus as closely. Uh, so keep that in mind. But yeah, it's a thumbs up for me, double thumbs up. Um, it's a fun little creative tool. All right. Thanks for watching again. Thanks for putting up with me. Um, just kind of put this video up on a whim. Um, and uh, I hope it really helps a lot of you that have already purchased this or thinking about purchase this. If you've already purchased it, then by all means, it's spending another 20 bucks to get a handful of uh, iPhone lenses with that adaptive ring. I think it's well worth doing the modification. Um, and if you guys, again, if you don't want it to be permanently fixed on there, then just do double-sided sticky tape or something uh, that'll hold it on there good enough and strong enough to be able to hold the other lenses, but maybe not permanent in case you don't actually want it permanently. But again, if you can come in here, the ring actually doesn't hinder and it doesn't cause any vignette anyway. So it's not hindering the camera as is like this without a lens on it. So there, I saw no risk and no no downside to having the ring permanently fixed on there, if that makes sense. So again, thanks for watching. I hope this clarified any things from my last video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll get back to those comments. And, um, and thank you for the tips on the last video about using epoxy rather than a super glue, just because the fumes from the super glue can sometimes cause issues. Um, so just be careful. I mean, if you're doing anything with a lens on a camera and glue, just go really slow and be very methodical and, and don't overuse the glue. I mean, use a very, very small amount of glue uh, and you'll be fine. Um, so, all right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.